All right, we're back uh, in open session uh, discussing uh, our item 6.3, the UCP proposed mm -hmm. changes. The, the other, so you're going to um, perhaps, out the yeah, take out the notes mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, and, and then check with surrounding superintendents mm -hmm. or county and CSBA and figure out um, to what extent other districts have, have, have done this. A as, as we were pointing out, there is a one option, one option two, um, which on my hard copy is around page 73 of the 100-page the document that Ms. Tamery sent out. Um, and this has to do with... I, whether or not the compliance officer shall prepare the final written decision or whether we wanted to add another layer of having the the board consider an appeal as it were right and either way it's within 60 days so if if the board wants to choose the option where a an employee or staff person can file a complaint uh, maybe it's a, a discrimination complaint or harassment complaint Time out. This is about only a situation where an employee is the complainant? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I just, as an example, it could be an organization. It could be the complaint committee. Which is usually a student. You, it could be a student. It could yeah. be a staff member, right? Could be. So yeah, I, it's usually a student. Oh, okay. So I, I think the, the option for the board, as you, were, as you were saying, is does the board want to allow uh, a complaint, uh, a complainant, to have the ability to appeal the decision directly to the board first uh, uh, before uh, exercising their option. They, they have in either instance to uh, file a complaint, I believe, or follow up with the CDE within 15 days. F follow up, uh, yes. Right. So the under the UCP, you have 15 days to file an appeal w with the California Department of Education and currently going through that process and have a meeting <laughs> with the department tomorrow on a, on a very large matter involving a very large district. Um, okay, but yes, so, I mean, the, the, is there any questions about this, this item, uh, the, the particular point or comment? Uh, in terms of a discussion, um, I, I would just do what every district I know does, which is have the compliance officer be the one that makes the decision, and okay. if there's a problem with it, uh, appeal to the, the CDE. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I don't know how, if others feel uh, differently. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, as it is, it, the UCP is, is, it's there, it's something, it, does provide some opportunity to have a complaint heard and redressed. It's not, in my experience, been the most effective mm. way to resolve a complaint, certainly not at the district level. Uh, mm. But um, in any event, that's so I, so I don't see the need to add another layer mm -hmm. of potential delay in, in the process. Others feel differently or the same? Option? Member Pats, do you have any? No, I'm good. I want to see the final. Okay, so it seems like... Option one? Uh, keep, yeah. it, keep it uh, as you Option said. one in the, in, in the final, but mm -hmm. we're not... Um, people can, can think about it and say something different at the when it comes before us again next time. Uh, the other... And final question I had was about the gender identity discrimination, mm. uh, which that was, uh, I was explaining why you're out of the room earlier. The last time we amended the UCP, uh, there was a specific complaint mm. filed in, uh, in our district. Um, we addressed the problem, worked it out with the uh, Office of Civil Rights, and one of the things that, that we did at that time was uh, amend our UCP to make sure we were adequately covering because it was about I think there was gender discrimination but not 
expressly gender identity discrimination hmm. uh, in our UCP. Uh, so we did add that. I don't want to lose that. Now, okay. I haven't gone through, uh, compare word to word, you said mm -hmm. OCR and CDE have, and CSBA have all met, and so perhaps they took our language and put it in there. I don't <laughs> know. But can you double check on that and sure, make I sure that we're not losing any of our gender identity discrimination amendments? I certainly will. I, I see, just as a quick glance, gender-based harassment that may be more may say gender identity. That could it be? May that it may be the same that you're referring to? Or no, no. Gen gender-based gender could be. It's not as explicit as gender identity. Yeah, a okay. gender identity claim. I'll go ahead and double check that. So see what we say in ours. On I that. Guess then that Got be my it. starting point. Okay, any other thoughts or comments on the UCP item? Okay, I think we'll not act on it tonight, um, but uh, wait for a subsequent take on this one. Any public comment on this item? All right, seeing none, why don't we go on to, oops, I lost my, feed in the interim. Item 6.4, which is? Board delegates. Ah, the delegates. The delegates have. Um, and may maybe do you want to also explain to our newer board members, uh, the newer, newer newest board member, what, what this is? Yes. Yeah, so See, we're, we're a member of the California School Board Association, and as most districts are, and w the CSBA has a Congress or body of representatives, and uh, the state is broken up into different regions, and each region has a certain number of representatives, and so we are electing our, is what this is about. Um, they meet. I want to say twice a year, maybe once a year. I know I've addressed them on uh, once, but uh, I think they meet twice a year and, and decide some. Uh, it's not the executive committee to CSBA, but the people on the executive committee and the president tend to come out of that body. And so anyway, so we're electing people to represent our interests or not uh, in, in that in that process. Any any questions uh, about this before we turn to discussion? Kay, any public comment on the CSB delegates? Seeing none, mm -hmm. uh, discussion, people have <coughs> Have any thoughts on, on delegates they liked or didn't like? We get to vote for four out of seven. Mm -hmm. I guess we don't have to put forth four if we don't mm -hmm. if we don't want to. We don't have to put forth any. Oh, should we? Go ahead, Member Mary. Yes, should we mix it up and uh, appoint, uh, put our thoughts towards the non-incumbents, just to. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, no. uh, that would be one way to go. Yeah. If, you, if you think the incumbents aren't doing <laughs> good, throw them out. Remember <laughs> um, that? Um, you know, I, I think Nancy Thomas and Amy Miller have done a fine job. I'm also, uh, fan of uh, Desiree and Craig, the two non-incumbents. So, Craig's last name, is that who? Or uh, no, Craig? Desiree Campbell and Craig Bueno. Craig Bueno, okay. So. Okay. Uh, do you know the two incumbents you mentioned? Uh, yeah, I mean, not, you know, we, we're not buddies, but yeah, mm -hmm. I've come into contact with them at various times, so. I, I personally know none of these individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, the, 
the three that I liked from looking at their applications were uh, Desiree Campbell um, Arkin and Who. And now I need to sort of pull up. Uh, it's actually easier on the hard copy. Mm -hmm. um, why I like them, but uh, th it seems to me we we typically get in this in this um, selection board members from the suburban districts. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not so much the urban districts. And so uh, since we're an urban district, I, I had a bias toward trying to get representation from um, more urban districts. That was one of my one of my thoughts. Um, one of the candidates, I'm not sure who it is, seemed to be a little too much of a cheerleader for CSBA. Who is that? Uh, I think it's in one of the incumbents, though. Uh, yeah, I think that was Miller. But you know more than supporting CSB, I, I, I liked um, what did I like about Mr. Who. Uh, school funding was a priority. Um, the fact that he was from uh, Alameda, which mm -hmm. is a, a little more closer to our demographic. Mm -hmm. He's been a classroom teacher instructor, at least in higher ed. Um, familiarity with community college students, career pathways. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, what did I like about Arkin? She is from a suburban district. But even so, she's she's an incumbent and seen. I, j I liked her. Her statement of interest. Seem to have a fair amount of. Uh, not just education, but other community experience too. And Miriam or uh, Collins Rogers, did you have any particular favorites? Um, after looking through each of the candidates' biographical sketch forms and just seeing some of the information that they provided on their applications, I would say that my number one and number two, not for any particular, you know, reason, vice versa, it could be um, who, as well as um, Desiree Campbell. I remember Pat's your your th three was it or did you? Have I get four. four. Well, what were they again? Miller, Miller, Thomas, Campbell, and Bueno. Thomas. Although Thomas. I know Arkin as well, and she's fine. I actually even know Hinsky peripherally. Um, I think Hugh is new to the board in Alameda, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, um, Miriam? Uh, I'd say remember Hugh, Thomas, and Campbell. Okay, well we all had Campbell, so that m makes that easy. Um, three of us had Hugh.
to, you had Thomas too, right? Um, at the Collins? No. Oh, you didn't. That was, who was your second one? Um, Sue and Campbell? Mm-hmm. Those are yeah. my two. Okay. And then if I had a three, it would be Miller. All right, so that's that leaves two for Miller, two for Thomas, maybe two for Arkin. You said Arkin. I just I'm just saying I know her. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said well she'd be fine. Yeah, so. she'd be fine. Um, so Hugh and Campbell. Seems Hugh Campbell, Miller, and Thomas have a have the most. Four. Yeah, that's yeah. four. <coughs> Hugh Campbell, Miller, and Thomas. Okay. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So, do we have a motion to? I guess are we voting for? We're voting for our CSBA delegate assembly it votes for Memory Unified to be candidates. Hugh, Campbell, Miller, and Thomas. So moved. Second that. So roll call. President Affelt? Yes. Board Member Patz? Yes. Vice President Miriam? Yes. Board Member Collins Rogers? Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Those will be our our votes, you know, um, God, it's kicking me off again. Uh, Superintendent, could you let us know how we did? <laughs> we never, <laughs> Our results, we never, sure. sure. I, we never learn, actually. Uh, I will go ahead and do that. Yes. If anyone listened to us. Um, okay. All right. All right, so the next item is. Uh, is the Casey update. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Which uh, you can present while I sure. log in again. All so right. Uh, Item 6.5 tonight uh, regards the California High School ex exit exam or the Casey. Um, this is an informational only update for the board. The purpose is to update the board and the public um, at on the status of the district's student Casey data as it relates to the suspension of the testing requirement um, by the state. Um, this is a little bit of history in our write-up here, beginning with the class of 2006. Students in California were required to pass the California High School Exit Exam, or Casey, um, to demonstrate competency in the subject matter areas. Uh, the governor has recently suspended the administration of the Casey. Uh, however, um, uh, in that change uh, and suspension, Students who previously did not pass the KC now have the opportunity to still receive the diploma if that was the only reason that they did not graduate from high school. So I have a little bit of data I just want to share with the board this evening and let the board know our plan. Um, from 2006 to 2015, uh, we had about 500 high school seniors come through our high school. Uh, going back over our data across those years, um, as best as we can tell currently from the data, we have about 60 students who did not, for various reasons, graduate from high school. Um, now the reason for not graduating could have been also due to not having sufficient credits completed, uh, but it may also have been due to not passing one or both sections of the Casey. Uh, we are taking some steps to determine if we can narrow down from those 60 names to know which students did not specifically pass the high school exit exam. Um, uh, but regardless, um, we are currently looking at these 60 students, and our plan is to send a letter to the last known address for each of these students, uh, letting them know of the change uh, uh, to the KC and that they have the opportunity if uh, the uh, not passing the KC was the only reason they didn't graduate or not graduate or did not receive a diploma. Uh, we're placing that letter and information on our website. Uh, if we get returned mail, which we, we suspect we may for some students, uh, our plan is to go ahead and use the internet and Google or Facebook students by their names to see if we can still f uh, connect with them. And our target date to get a letter out to these 60 students or possibly fewer if we can narrow that down is March the 15th. 
Um, this will be a, a long process that will, as it will require quite a bit of time of staff uh, if students, uh, when students come in so that uh, when we go through the process that is of determining was the reason they didn't graduate just the KC exit exam or was it also due to uh, not having sufficient, a sufficient amount of credits. So that is our plan. Um, I know all the districts are, are, are well many of the districts, I've, I've, other superintendents have told me that they're working on different endeavors to get this information out. I know Hayward was doing that and trying to get students to know that you have the opportunity to still receive your diploma. I believe the county superintendent, uh, she polled us in a meeting recently and um, I concurred with her and the other superintendents that we thought it would be great if the county puts an ad in some of the larger papers and so uh, that I believe is the county superintendent's plan as well. So uh, that's an update for you this evening on uh, Casey. Do you know um, if most of our fellow, at least Alameda County districts, are trying to do any outreach? I don't have a hard number because it was, it was a little bit of a, um, a general verbal conversation at the table with the superintendents. I, uh, we didn't, I, don't, I don't recall. I believe the, super, the county superintendent may have polled them, though. I can find, mm -hmm. find out if you like. That'd be good to know. Yeah. Uh, my sense is it's hit and miss mm -hmm. that, that some... Some districts, districts are. are doing it, some aren't. Yeah, the, the state <laughs> has sort of created this quandary of creating a requirement and then yanking it back years later, but not providing districts the support to do the outreach uh, to notify students. So that's where we're at. I'm glad we're doing it. And, the, and I appreciate the time staff is putting into it. Yeah, thank you for bringing it to our attention as well. Well, and I think you've already had a student or two come in on their own, right? And we have. And get a diploma. We have. A few students uh, that did come to their attention, and they have come in, and they were able to get uh, their diploma. And move forward with yeah. their life. Yeah. That's good. Uh, other questions, comments? Quick question. So I know that students, the, is it still eight chances that they get to pass the KC? It, it was sort of unlimited, but you, you just ran out of time eventually. Right. Um, but right now, it's not administered anymore. Oh, okay. They so, suspended so it. So oh. if you haven't passed it, you, it's <coughs> not being administered. Hmm. So that is what occasioned the, um, the, the original, <laughs> the original uh, plan was just to stop administering it, but that put the class of 2015 in a quandary. So then, in, then plan B was to uh, exempt class of 2015 from the requirement. And then <coughs> sort of at the last minute, the, the governor's office said, well, why don't we just exempt everyone? And so that's what happened, okay. going back to 2006. So it's not being administered, but anyone who has never passed, if that's the only reason you didn't get a diploma, you can now get a diploma. So if you know anyone from your era, uh, get the word out. Now we all pass with flying colors. Uh, <laughs> Everybody walked in my class. That's good. It was a good year. 2010 was on the ball. Any public comment on this item? All right. I think that uh, takes us back to the ratification list. Yes, and Mr. Baker, thank you for being here tonight. We know it's an unusual evening for us to have a board meeting. And we have, Mr. Baker, we have a, a qu couple questions on the ratification list. John, is that mic on? I don't know. There's a power button on top. To the right, I believe. The one that says mute. Uh, 
Mr. Merritt, you had... Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, Baker. Um, quick question pertaining to COR number 270, the power and lighting ads. Yes. Um, to start off, was the site adequately lit per code for safety and uh, basically for uh, basically for safety reasons of like point, I think it's point one foot candle is required throughout the site? <coughs> and was it adequately lit at that time? And then we just added, or is this because there were no lights and it was basically a darkened space that had no ability to be for safety purposes? There are two issues actually, good question. The site lighting, what was lit, what was lit in the bid, bid document scope of work as designed by DSK was code required lighting at the exit paths. Mm -hmm. And so there are various exit paths throughout the site, uh, most of the community commons, but also as you, as you get out towards the field and the gym, fewer pathways mm -hmm. were lit. Um, we reviewed that and uh, working with the architects and also with the district and city at our Monday meetings, determined that we need to have some additional lighting. Um, one area of lighting, for example, was the basketball courts and the playground were not lit because they're not required exit paths. Mm -hmm. That's just a decision that the architect had made. So we added some site lighting throughout that to make those much more better lit so that during an evening event, if there was a, an activity in the field uh, and parents could have maybe small children in the playground area or, or kids could be playing basketball in the evening. So we added some lighting for those exterior areas. Um, the other part of this, which is probably more about more of two-thirds of the amount actually, is that the underside of the canopies, um, during the value engineering process, we were going to remove some canopies and then we went back in because planning wanted to. We had to, they, those, the lighting had come out also. So we put lighting back into those canopies. And so mostly it was the, all the lighting for the canopies that we were going to remove had, had come out. If you recall, in one of our other ratification items, we added the canopies back in, and this is to add that lighting into those canopies as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is uh, one that I, that I typically ask on these ratification lists uh, in terms of the contingencies. Mm -hmm. How how are we doing? Um, I know you, the first item for twenty six thousand you said is funded by construction contingency and the, the the rest there's no information on that so um, it's coming out of bond money or um, um. each of these items are, are funded by construction contingency we've been budgeting okay. these items for quite some time in fact all of these items were included in the budget when we had our most recent discussion about the additional bond funds and contingency so none of these are expected we're finalizing we're all of these items are for finalizing pricing and now coming forth to the board. Okay, so you had them, and you, you were. Kind That's of correct. These have all been in the budget for quite some time. Yeah, this is not part of the new bond proceeds. No, no. The the new bond is, if you recall, was for some specific items. Yeah. Uh, but these are all coming out of budgeted contingency, and these have all been budgeted since last fall. Okay. And um, how are we doing on the in terms of how much contingency is left, and and do you still anticipate we're going to spend that down? And yeah, we're, I, I think again is uh, I uh, at a the January reports that I gave to the board as well as city schools as well as the citizens oversight committee I had a snapshot of how we're doing right. on those contingency categories um, are right now where we're we've probably o only maybe about one percent above those figures overall we've not had that many change orders come up any new new items come up um, so we're still doing I think better than expected I think it will probably end up at the end of the project being about at what had been originally budgeted for contingency for change orders okay that's that's my and, and you also answered the have we seen anything new big and you say no that's correct sort of what we expect so far mm -hmm. all right other questions no public comment on this item Okay, uh, do we have a motion to adopt the ratification list? So moved. A second. All second. Uh, roll call, please. Board President Affelt? Yes. Board Member Patz? Yes. Vice President <coughs> Miriam? Yes. Board Member Collins Rogers? Yes. Okay, now we are on to 
Discussion item 6.1, which is um, uh, uh, ECCL update. Yes, thank you. We have Mr. Baker here uh, to give us the current update regarding the ongoing project activities and status for the Emeryville Center for Community Life. Mr. Baker, uh, and, and Mr. Baker, that is the um, PDF, so you may have to scroll or use the arrow right, yes, the the arrow keys might work. That's what I commonly use. Okay, good. Uh, good evening. Uh, it, it, again, uh, just an orientation slide so that everyone's aware of which buildings are which, because I'll discuss buildings A, B, C, D, and E. Building A is the community building at the corner of 53rd and San Pablo. Building B, the admin building along San Pablo Avenue. Building C is the K through 8 school in the middle of the site. Building D is the high school at the corner of 47th and San Pablo. Building E is the pool and gym. Just a highlight of construction updates. Uh, the, uh, the gym is now complete and operational. Uh, the last remaining part of the gym to complete is the pool, which is now about 85% complete. Uh, the pool should be complete about March 20th, uh, which is actually on the contract schedule with the exception of some rain days that we will incorporate. So we're in good shape there. We're planning now on, uh, on that closing out the pool, opening that. The first activity will take place at the pool actually is that there's a, the city's hosting a small triathlon in, in mid-April, and so we'll be using the pool for its first use, at least in that event, maybe use it before that once we get uh, things up and operational. But the, pool's got, the pool work has gone really quite well, um, and we've actually, other than rain, been right on schedule for that. And so that'll be done. I'll show some photos of that in a minute. Um, high school, again, the interior work is complete except for the, the parts which we strategically held back on. Um, I, I, we are actually in our efforts to expedite the high school completion. We're going to, we're putting together a plan to put some temporary walls in so we can condition the space and get the, that work in early. That'll help us move forward to complete the high school. Um, that's something that we finalized just this week, so we realize that we can actually do that and, 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 and expedite that part of the work. Um, the elevator stair deck work is now well underway. If you drive by 47th, you can see the big, tall posts for the uh, elevator stair structure. And we've got all those footings are now excavated, and we're going to start pouring concrete there next week. Um, the building A, is, building A, the community building is really nearly complete. All the painting is done. Uh, the ceiling work is going in right now, and that building will probably be complete at um, uh, the end of April uh, for for use if we were wanted to do that. Um, building B is all you can see if you drive by. All the exterior uh, building papers on. We're getting ready to stucco that building. All the windows are in, and the roof is complete. So that building is just about closed in now, so we can start interior, the interior sheetrock and finish work. Um, Building C, uh, if you've seen, all the exterior sheathing is now on, that yellow board. All the framing is complete. All the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, roughing is complete. And the roofing is also complete. We now have the roof on that building. So very, as soon as we get the windows in, and that window work, I think, starts in two weeks, we'll have that building closed in. We'll be able to start doing interior sheetrock. So things are moving rapidly. We've had, we've, we have been fortunate in that February has not been as wet a month as January was. March is projected to be wet again, but who knows? But we've had some good progress the last couple weeks, as you'll see. Um, again, high school completion, we've held back on those finishes, but because we're going to put some temporary walls in, that'll allow us not only to finish the interior work, but actually, as that deck work is outside, even occupy the work while there's still some exterior deck work to go. So that's our latest strategy. We have a scheduled work session tomorrow with Turner. Uh, one thing I'm going to be talking about at the city schools meeting next week is, again, a potential Saturday work plan to take to council. We're looking at targeted Saturdays for Building D between now and uh, the end of May, and also targeted days for the K-8 through school in May, June, and July. And so we're formulating that plan. Um, we're looking at going to the first board meeting, uh, the first council meeting in April, but I want to have a discussion with the for in the form of the city schools group the joint council and board next week, next Thursday, to have that discussion. Uh, and we're going to present a draft version of that plan for, for review and comment before we would formulate it and take it to the city council. Uh, so say again the dates. You go to city I'm council. I'm sorry. So the city council would be April? the first meeting in April, which is the first and, week and in the April. And the work would be May, June, July? Is that what you said? We would look at doing Saturday work for related to Building D in April and May. And then for the K through eight school in May, June, and July. Okay. 
Uh, building, this is a bit of a dark photograph here. Uh, building A, the exterior, is now, exterior and all the windows are now complete. Um, everything actually, this is interior of the main, the main commuter room. You can now see the painting is complete, the ceiling grid is in. What remains in, in this building are finishes. Ceiling grid, uh, ce ceilings, flooring, doors, casework. So we actually have just about another, about seven or eight weeks to finish to complete this building. Uh, you'll see that we've got all the, all the that's all the ductwork and the ceiling grid in, and so in the next couple weeks, ceiling panel, ceiling panels will be going in the, in that in that space. This is a view from the second story of the building B lobby, looking towards A. There's a, this was taken on the one rainy day we did have, but you can see building A in the distance is is um, the exterior work is complete. Building B now, you can see that the black, uh, all that black. Uh, color on the walls is the building paper, the exterior. That's the first layer that goes on before the stucco work. All the windows are complete. Uh, we start doing stucco work on this building uh, at the end of next week. And so that building is now closed in. So we can now proceed with interior finishes for the interior drywall for that building. You can see kind of more in detail. The scaffold is all up so that we can, the, the, the subcontractors can start installing the lath and plaster. This is the interior B, so all the framing and, and mechanical electrical plumbing roughing is done. So once this building is closed in, now we can start doing sheetrock. So the sheetrock and drywall work is the next step inside building B. Uh, all of this, this is hard to see also, but all of the, the infrastructure for the restrooms is in RN2. So once this is uh, uh, sheetrocked and tiled, those fixtures can be installed. Uh, exterior of building D is complete except for the two walls that face the deck and except for the operable windows, which we're putting all at once uh, later this spring. Again, there's the, the if you walk there, the, the painting of the walls all done, but you see the flooring. The ceilings actually are now, the ceiling grid is actually now being installed because we're doing that all at once so that we can economize on the installation. So again, the doors, casework, flooring, and now the ceilings are now underway. And when we get the, those temporary walls I just spoke of in, we're going to go ahead and start going pretty quickly on completing the finishes for the interior of the building. So you can see the paint colors there. Um, outside of building C, uh, this now is complete. This, this photograph was taken last week. That yellow board is the sheathing. That exterior sheathing is now, I'd say, about 95% complete on the exterior of the building. Next goes windows. The, roofing, the roof of this building is now complete. So in about a month's time, we'll be closed in in building C also, and we can commence with the drywall in, in, in the interior of that building. You can see all the framing is done. Uh, this is inside the, the, uh, the multi-use room, uh, which is uh, a nice big space. We, did a, we took some of the teachers from Andy Yates through a tour last week for this facility, and so they enjoyed seeing what that space is like. Again, we've got, uh, we've got framing complete. You can see all the work's on the ceiling. We have some drywall, uh, what's called priority walls up high where ductwork is. Those are in. So we're going to basically, once we get the windows in, we'll be completing the drywall in the K-8 school. This is the gym. Uh, this is a photograph that I, I believe we uh, uh, showed the, um, uh, I, might, I believe this might have been, this is the girls' basketball practice. Um, you can see they're using this facility every day now. Um, that shows the bleachers with the ECCL logo when those unfold. When they fold up flat, flat against the wall, you can see they, they have ECCL um, on them, so it's kind of a neat uh, feature. Um, this is the exit pass, so that, that you can see that this actually construction fence has now got mesh on it. This is so you can, these are the emergency exits, so you can exit the gym uh, during construction. Um, we've we've uh, been very careful, and we have a, a site meeting once a week, and then a, our owner architect contractor meeting once a week, talking about site safety and security to make sure that we have this, that we are, are operating the facility so that the, the <coughs> students and public using the facility are isolated from the construction. It's something we're, we're very uh, careful about, and we meet twice a week to make sure that we're keeping up with all those protocols. Um, this is the, this is, these are new photographs of the gym locker room. These are the pool locker rooms. So again, the gym locker rooms are complete and in use. These are the locker rooms for the pool. And there you can see a photograph from a week ago that the, 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 now the, the gutter work is now complete and the last concrete work in here is actually the, the finished plaster work that will go in the pool. So that plaster work should be done um, in the first week in March. 
And there's another photograph of, of this. So the last piece that we'll have will be, is the deck. Uh, as I mentioned last time, a lot of our planning meetings now are in relation to move-in operations and maintenance. Furniture purchase in progress. The building, the gym furniture is, is purchases are complete. Um, all the security, AV, data, telecom scope outside of terms contract is complete. Purchases and purchasing is in progress. We've had a number of move planning meetings with faculty and staff. We had an orientation meeting at Andy Yates week before last, and at at uh, at um, uh, at the Santa Fe site also right after that to talk about planning. We introduced uh, uh, Elizabeth Bornstein of Swinerton, who's going to be coordinating a lot of the move planning, working the interface. She'll be the interface between the movers and and the faculty and staff. And we talked about timelines and also how the process is going to work. Um, and so those meetings actually were, were very informative and, and, and went quite well. Um, we did, and um, we will be working with that, those groups over the next several weeks to start planning for those moves. Uh, we have, again, a, a monthly programming meeting to talk about the shared use of the facility. In fact, both of these meetings we have tomorrow afternoon. The program meeting is to talk about how we program things together. That, that group is the city and district now, specifically the gym use, scheduling the gym. Again, the city sort of is the owner of the gym, if you will, from a scheduling standpoint, and the district then goes through uh, the city's community, uh, community recreation department, Pedro Jimenez, to schedule the gym. Um, we've had quite a few activities in there. The city's had activities. Um, there was a youth activity with uh, the Golden State Warriors. And then we have a practice, basketball practice every afternoon. And also we've had several games there already. Um, the operations <coughs> and maintenance build meetings are also held once a month. It's a joint meeting with the city and district to coordinate maintenance. Obviously we're actively maintaining uh, built the, uh, the, the gym building now. Now planning, the big planning now is for the pool opening and that operations. And so as, as facilities come online, that, that becomes more of an active uh, group that, that where, we, where they plan and, and uh, and, and coordinate how we're maintaining the buildings. And again, we're working with the, the city and district to budget the capital replacement reserve, which is required by the JOA, and, develop, and also develop the annual maintenance budgets. Mr. Baker, before you turn the page, would you mind diminishing that? Uh, and for your, ne your next slide, I'm, I'm missing a slide, and I have it on the desktop I was going to ask you. I know I'm, I'm piggybacking on your slide presentation. Okay. If you diminish that one on the top left of the desktop, you'll have to yeah, hide that too, sorry. Uh, hit escape on your, hit escape. And then um, uh, see if you can diminish that one more time. Yeah, try not to, you're catching that. You, you can drag that over, I'm sorry. You might have to, no, uh, help me help you out. Yeah, I sorry, I got you. I'm not familiar with this. No, I'm sorry, we had to use, our laptop died just to get it to find it temporarily. You want to copy? Okay. So this picture, before we look at the next couple slides of Mr. Baker's slide deck, I just wanted to put in front of all of us again, as I'm learning more and getting more comfortable and developing my own knowledge of the facility and the site and um, I, was at, I was at the site visiting last week with a couple teachers who are now on the Anna Yates ECCL transition team. They volunteered to help with the transition. Ms. McDonald and Ms. Dunn are also coordinating efforts and working with us together and the staff. Uh, but this slide I think is a really good one for in terms of information because it shows with those arrows um, the direction, once the gates are locked, those directional arrows show which way the gates push open. And Mr. Baker, if I get this wrong, please feel free to correct me. So if you'll notice section five, which typically we've been planning uh, to be the tentatively K-5 area uh, for the most part, uh, no one can come into that area from the high school area, from the exterior, from the section two area where people can come in to visit the city uh, office or see the receptionist. So I just wanted the board again to see this in terms of safety and the potential zones of um, 
use that we have on the facility. Uh, I thought it was uh, helpful uh, for me, and I wanted to share that with the board. Um, and the yellow dots, I think I, we mentioned before, are the locations of the security cameras that we have around the campus. And then uh, if, you, if there are no quick, questions quick question about... question on that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, on your arrows, every arrow only goes in one direction. That's right. So is, is, are some of those arrows two direction and some one? And is there a way to graphically... They're all actually, if all the gates are unlocked, I believe they're, they can go both ways. But once those gates are secured and locked, they only push open, I, was, I assume it's a panic bar, push bar. Yeah, so the, what those green arrows show is the direction of, traf the direc direction of travel with a panic bar, like you're used to sort of like these doors where, so you can at any time exit in there, at any time you can exit in the, air, in the direction of the arrow. You c the only way you can go back through the reverse way is with, with a card key um, that would then be programmed for certain faculty and staff to access and go th through those other ways. But, so, but some, like the street entrances at three, certainly at two, if those were locked, I, I guess I think yeah. I think so the that's the point. That's if the it's point. Locked, yeah. If it's locked, you that's can the only direction. Go out, yes. Again, it would time. not be locked during the day. Cor those two arrows to the right of section two would not be locked okay. during the day. That's right. But the the arrows behind section two, leading into section one and section five. That's correct. Those would be locked during the day. Yes. Is that the so? Is there a way? Uh, maybe it's a different color. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah, those yeah. are red as opposed to the green. Which the ones? The red for the for the ones on the interior. So the ones that are locked during the day. Uh huh. Uh huh. Maybe okay. you make those a different color than sure. the ones that are unlocked during the day, so people can Keep look at this and see. Oh, that's where the public can get to. And I that's where the public the cannot direction. get to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's a good idea. Any other questions about this one slide for Mr. Baker? And then, Mr. Baker, if you go back to your PDF, if there are not any other questions, we'll th we continues with the same. I had been at my uh, last slide, actually, so oh, that, that it, concludes. Uh, it, we've added some to you. I don't know if you noticed. So, so go ahead, and if you go back to that, that uh, other document you diminished, you'll have to close that. You can close that photo to your right. There's an X at the top. And then yours, I think. Uh, it's the, uh, Mr. Baker, it's the, there you go. Should be one more down, I believe. Mm -hmm. There you go. So this is the same picture. Thanks, Mr. Baker. I appreciate it. This is the same picture uh, that we were just looking at, except uh, based on some, you know, w I am trying to develop this out. I spoke to the principals about a week ago, Ms. McDonald. Uh, I spoke to several teachers on the Annie Yates transition team, and we were at the site last week talking about the space. Uh, so what I've d started to do is try to develop out where I believe we would have supervision, the potential use and separation, and areas where we would have students. Um, you know, one of the benefits I ha had really hadn't clearly thought of is that you'll notice a couple of the red asterisks, they represent district staff. So we could actually have some additional district staff out helping with supervision in the mornings. Um, so that actually increases our uh, number of staff for supervision. So I, I had, that hadn't occurred to me until last week as I was laying this out. So uh, I wanted to kind of start to present this as I'm still developing it uh, uh, to the board and what I have so far. And then the next two slides, Mr. Baker, if you don't mind, I appreciate it, uh, just show as the day progresses, the high school kids go in, for example, and then you have a potential rotation between either half the two halves of the f uh, football soccer field between middle school and high school PE, or high school PE is in their half of the gym with the wall up, and middle school PE has the entire football field, or vice versa. Uh, to the second through fifth grade teachers who should be doing PE on their own uh, during the K-1 recess, uh, in, in this block of time typically, this is based on the current bell schedule at Annie Yates, could be using the other half of the gymnasium. They can be using section nine, and the teachers I spoke to from Anna Yates on the transition team said, instead of having K-1 recess just in Section 5, and, as well as the other grades, why not take advantage of all this space? Let's, let's come up with a rotation so K-1 students could sometimes be on the basketball court in Section 8, uh, or that asphalt area playing, uh, and then other days they could be with supervision as well in the Section 5 area. Why not, the teachers said, why not take advantage of the, uh, the space? Um, 
So uh, that's an example. And Mr. Baker, if you go one more slide, it's just another time. It's 9.30 to 10.30. Uh, same idea, uh, just a, a, a draft sketch of what it might look like. Um, uh, I should have actually took, taken TK recess off of that one. <coughs> but um, I just wanted to start to put this in front of the board as I'm trying to develop this with the principals and teachers and Ms. McDonald and Ms. Dunn are helping uh, develop this coordination. We have a lot of planning to do. Uh, but I thought I would begin to get some of this in front of you. <coughs> can you go back to the first one? The yeah, that, that. So well, first of all, this. Uh, this, this, this. I assume you did it this way, assuming a K-12, in, in order to. Uh, um, because you were asked to say, well, what would the flow look like if everyone were on that campus at the same time? That's correct. It was simply just the, my just in my planning and drafting of this so far. That's all I had have come up with with that assumption at the moment. Yeah. So it. if we did it some other way or used Danny Yates for some of the lower grades, mm -hmm. then then this becomes even that much easier. Yeah, the K five in section five, that area there could be second grade or third grade through fifth grade. Right. Um, so so. Well, let me try to digest. This is uh, 8 to 8.30 in the morning, probably the most crowded <coughs> crowded time when everyone's everyone's going to be there at that. It at that is. Time. Right now it's assuming the high school and Annie Yates both are starting at 8.30. I don't know if that will be the case or not, but if, if, the, if, we can, if that is the case, then that would potentially be the most crowded time. If we have alternating or, or staggered start times, then actually this picture actually uh, there, are, there, are, um, there, is a le there are less students if we alter the schedules by chance. So I've heard you make reference to that from time to time. Um, can you, what are you thinking about having the high school start at a different time, or what, you know, have you discussed that with the teachers and the parents? How, do, how does that, how do we decide that? I haven't discussed it yet. It, it's crossed my mind from time to time. I, I have, I, well, I take that back. I did have uh, some formal conversations with Don Turner and Mark Davis last year about it. And we, we created some different sketches of potential schedules with the basic premise being, uh, and the question for me as superintendent, why aren't we starting later for some of our students? There's a, there's a trend, I think, um, really that is logical to me across the country that many high school or High schools are starting school later and allowing the students to get some more rest and sleep. Um, I forgot you're a high school parent. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I've just posed the question. I know uh, my experience in San Francisco was that, and this was K-12, half of the schools in San Francisco start at 7.50 in the morning, half start at 9.30, and that's simply due to busing, so they can get two runs from the bus drivers without having to pay them any more money or overtime, I think. So that's the premise of what is behind the schedule in San Francisco. So I thought, well, we don't have that situation. We have a nice size to our district in, uh, here in Emeryville. So has anyone asked this question? Um, you know, why are we starting as early as we start? I, we have teachers who struggle to get there by 8.30, uh, even at the K-8. Um, and that's uh, been an ongoing interesting issue. <laughs> so it, it, it is a, a kind of a question I've, I've pondered, and um, uh, I think it deserves uh, some more uh, um, uh, thought and conversation. If the board likes, I would certainly be glad to bring that question back after some more conversation with Dawn and the teachers. Mm -hmm. But if you did start later, then presumably at least the out uh, section nine. I think those are basketball courts. That does right. Some there's some seating there, some basketball courts. That's that would correct. be available for um, a, a K eight. It'd be yeah. It would be. It would be. Um, available maybe for the, the middle school grades. And would we have supervision for that as well as the later supervision for the 9-12 when they do come? I think we do because the supervision for the 9-12 isn't typically, uh, most of our high school students, um, in my experience there, and, and our newest board member might uh, certainly feel free to chime in if I have this one wrong, but they tend to get to the school and, and come right in. Uh, we have a little bit more on the, on the end, at the end of school where we see kids sometimes hanging out outside, but um, uh, Usually I've seen students come in, security guard opens the door and they come right in. Um, so uh, I haven't seen uh, much uh, of students hanging out outside at the current facility. Now, of course, this is a different layout, so I don't know if they'll be more attracted to it or not. But, um, uh, but yes, that space, to answer your question, if I didn't, would be available and we would not have the over, uh, any overlap there. And you've got K-12 
K5 in the center, section five there, but also you've got fifth graders on the field. Yeah, the so thought was, and this again is another programming question or planning question, but w that field is so large, why wouldn't we allow fifth graders, as a, an example, in the morning to have the option to go back and forth, and maybe that's the, s certainly the sixth and seventh grade student designated area with fifth graders also able to make a choice between that area or the uh, section five area. So uh, just, again, the thought was, why don't we take advantage of this, this great amount of space? Even the teachers last week were, were kind of stunned when they stood at the south end of section five and they looked back. Uh, I don't think they realized, and, and uh, it's coming clearer to me as I walk the facility more with them, that how large that, that section five area is. So it's, there's, a, there's a good amount of space we can take advantage of in this scenario. Uh, what's going on in the multi-purpose room? There's a wall that cuts through the multi-purpose room. I believe uh, that room is about, and I, 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 I wish I had the numbers in front of me. Mr. Baker, I'm not sure if you know, but I, th I think it's over 4,000 square feet. I think it's about, it's more than twice the size of the current Anna Yates uh, multi-purpose room. Uh, maybe yeah, I think that each half is roughly the size of this room. Okay. Maybe so a little narrower. Okay. So uh, there's a wall that cuts down the middle there so that uh, we would be able to have students uh, from one grade span on one side versus <coughs> students uh, on, the other, on the other side. So for example, in this scenario in front of you, 6th, uh, 7th, 8th, uh, and possibly uh, nine through 12 students would enter from the uh, left side. Um, and they wouldn't actually wouldn't be able to enter section five. They'd have no choice They'd if they were to go into the for any food in the morning or to grab a snack, they would have to go in that area. Um, the K-5 students uh, would be entering from the right side in Section 5. And, and I guess another question comes to mind, kind of goes back to your previous slide. The No, no, stay, stay on this one. Um, you see the green arrow at the top, the entrance to the elementary school? Yes. And... I guess the same question for the entrance to the high school and the entrance to the gym in Section 10. Are those locked during the day or open during the day? W that's uh, w part of the programming and planning piece that we need to determine. I think, um, I, I think my, my guess would be that the, s the number 10 uh, section w w would be locked uh, but, um, and only push, pu able to push out in case of a fire or emergency. But uh, we still have to determine in our planning with teachers and with our transition teams which gates are locked and which are not. We haven't gone into that depth yet. Okay. Wouldn't 10's locking not be up to us, but to the school, but to the, uh, but to the city? Uh, possibly so. It's, it's, uh, it, it is something we haven't, I, I don't think the city has gotten there yet, and, and we, we do have a joint, we have joint programming and planning, but uh, it, that may be more up to the city since it's that, the pool area. That's one of the topics for discussion tomorrow, actually. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's pool operation. Other questions on uh, this or any of the, the subsequent yeah. slides? Uh, just two things. Uh, one thing's being with the the gates keep coming up as far as a discussion item. Um, with the security measure behind the, the gates themselves as far as panic hardware, are you providing, or is, is there a provision for uh, a type of mesh or screen so you can't reach through the, uh, the yes. gate in order to operate? Good, good question. In fact, we, we've, got, we've got a couple of mesh, mesh options. The current scope is a two inch square. It's, it's a kind of a mesh grate mm -hmm. really. Uh, but that's what size that open is. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably one of the last decisions we'll make on the on the okay. design. So we have some options there. But, but you are, you we've are. asked we've asked Turner to put some samples together so that the city district can take a look at those at the site. Okay. <laughs> and then secondly, uh, the second one has something to do with the pool. Um, what level of competition is it slated for? Is it there any level of competition? So the the pool is. Uh, it's basically as a community pool. Okay. Uh, it, as I understand it, it is that's for the, um, I guess the division or the size of this high school. That pool is appropriate and is sized properly for the type of competitions that a small high school of this size will have. Uh, it is as 
as, high, as schools get larger, there are different requirements for um, sizes of pools. Um, but it is a joint use pool. It's a joint community school use pool. So it will have timers, starting blocks, uh, lane lines. I so yeah, there are lane lines. Uh, no, la there are lane li it has lane lines. I think there are six lanes. And then uh, starting blocks and timers are a whole bunch of pool equipment that we actually have purchased. And starting blocks are among them, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're not permanent. They're just, if you have a meet, they, they, they put in place. Okay. And then finally, pertaining to the actual pool configuration, uh, has it been verified as far as the, the correct size? And it, basically, they do a measurement after the concrete's done in order to verify if it's competition ready. I don't know if there's actually sort of cert a certification measurement. I know that the, the construction documents have been sized to, uh, uh, to comply with those standards. I'm not sure if there's some kind of interscholastic Exactly. Measurements that take there, place. There, there usually is if it is a, a certain level of competition. So mm -hmm. just verify if that's going to take place uh, in order to make sure it's 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 uh, certified. I might just want to add on to the conversation. The pool just uh, um, and I'm for your everybody's information, because it's a shared use pool and it's and a very important aspect of the city's program during a, a mm -hmm. big chunk of the year. Um, the pool was designed and and shallowed to make it uh, more workable and amenable for seniors and students. And so it is not it, uh, your uh, traditional um, meat certified. Okay. Okay. As a, so, so it's more of a, it's, it, it, I think the purpose of the pool will, will be, be a strong asset uh, for, the, for the partnership, mm -hmm. but certainly for the city's okay. aspect of having a community pool more than a competition pool. All right. Other questions? Are you still going, Mr. Merrick? No, we're not fine. Okay. Can you go to the next slide, uh, Mr. Baker? Um, so lo looking at the PE going on there between the field and the gym, I just want to make sure I got the concept right here. That yeah, the thought was... You're saying that, that in one half of the gym at 8.30, 9.30, they'll either be grade two or three or four or five. Mm -hmm. Depending on One the of day of the week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending on the master schedule. That's right. Um, and another, is that another PE class in nine or is it the same PE class split? It, it's an option really. I, I just marked it as a, you know, there could be, there could be a teacher in both pla with a different class in both places or one uh, on the master schedule sometimes. There's a, right now, there's, and this may be due to space, there's only one teacher doing PE on Mondays mm -hmm. at 8.30, 9.30. So it may just be one teacher with one class in the gym. Um, or it could be uh, more flexibility in the master schedule where they know that there's room for, you know, the three second grade classes to split two teachers maybe in section nine, one inside the gym, depending on the activities they have planned for, for PE. Or, so or the PE teacher could decide, today it's a beautiful day, we're going to be outside, we're going to get whatever, play tag mm -hmm. in, in, in section nine. That's right. Or, or in on another day, same class, might take everyone into the gym. To That's play. correct. The, the field, um, you're saying there just be some kind of rotation between the high schools on the field for their PE one day? Or are you saying that that field could be split too? So maybe high school has half the field, and PE has, uh, middle school is another half the field. That's correct. Yeah, that's just to, dis to demonstrate or display the some of the options. Uh, as I was tinkering about uh, looking at the, the okay. layout, would they both be in the gym at the same time? Or I don't know if they, if they would do that. I don't think so. No, I think really the, my diagram is to show that either the high school PE teacher um, could be in the gym. Uh, or the middle school PE teacher with their class, thereby leaving the other teacher on the field. We currently have one high school PE teacher and one yeah. um, middle school PE teacher. So what, what happens if it rains? And they, and they both that, that's more of our programming and planning piece that we need to go ahead and determine. So in that case, it would likely mean high school would have one half of the gym, middle school would have the other half of the gym, uh, the, the, I would imagine because the K-5 teachers have a lot more flexibility in when they can take their kids out to PE, and they certainly would here on this, in this space, mm -hmm. that they wouldn't go out for PE that day. Or use the multi-use room. Yeah. Or use the multi-use room. Oh, thank you. That's right. Mm -hmm. I guess that's Good point. Yeah. That's, that's what they do now. And it's in the morning, you could probably do that. Mm -hmm. Not if it's a lunchtime. Not at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and the there are what four PE periods a day? I mean, is it a ninth, a tenth, eleven, twelfth, or are there more than that? I don't know the high school PE schedule that well. I know the middle school is nonstop all day long, period by period, um, in terms of uh, addressing the uh, uh, seventh and eighth graders and the. The middle school it's PE six teacher. Six, too, isn't it? Or is it? Well, I was gonna, yeah, I was about to add that the middle school teacher provides some support to the fourth and fifth grade um, students. But it's six, as well. seven, and eight. But primarily, yeah, middle school is six, seven, eight, yes. Six, seven, eight for PE, yeah. yes. Typical at high school is you have freshman PE, sophomore PE, and then an athletic and PE. And sports. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. Because it's, it's only a two year requirement. Mm -hmm. I guess that's right. Seven. Mm -hmm. So quick Mr. question, Mr. Baker. I'm seeing that in each of the descriptions for the diagram of the ACCL, there's a instance where it says the play structure and then the play equipment. What does the play equipment entail? Is that how is that different than the play structure? So the um, if you look at where it says TK recess play structure, there's quite a large outdoor play structure that's geared more towards smaller kids mm -hmm. in that location. Um, the where you see play structure along inside the community commons, we're looking at the possibility of adding a play structure there that's more geared towards older kids. There's also some uh, movable play equipment that actually comes out in that in that space uh, that is used during the day that can be put away um, at when school is not in session, so that that's a multi-use space can be used for that. Um, I don't see we see play equipment right there. The wall uh, hollow. A little. A little above oh, I'm okay, so it's uh, okay. In fact, the play equipment is what I spoke of. That's the the move of the port of the stuff that comes out of oh. storage, and can be used during the day. And then that that's and there's a storage place there for that play equipment. Okay. And that's that, again that's more geared towards the grades two through five kids, and the play structure at the top of the page is geared towards the K through two, the smaller kids. So there hasn't been a finalization of what equipment will actually be used for those children. Yeah, the, the the play structure at the top of the page is in the is part of the construction contract and that will be installed this spring, and then the uh, play equipment is being purchased and that again will be that's something that is stored away in a room and then comes out during the day, and then the play structure that you see along the admin building we're looking at the possibility of doing additional play structure there we'll be bringing that back to the board for consideration. In the next few weeks. Right. I just, just to finish my my prior point on the high school and middle school um, use the. It, remember, Pat's is correct. Maybe that there are only two periods. Anyway, I, my point is we'll see this in the full flush out. It, it might be there are only two periods where the high school is on the field, and then there's more, even more space in the later part that's, of the that's day correct. for yes. middle school PE and or. K-5 PE that's to right. get out on the field. That's correct. correct. Um, so that it's not um, the case that, that only high school and middle school kids get to use the field. This is a brainstorm. This isn't an actual schedule. This was simply you plotting yeah. some things out. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't have all these things happening at 8.30 to 9.30. School is just starting. Mm -hmm. I would hope we're not trying to have PE for everybody. For Well, I actually do like the idea of PE first thing in the morning, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tend to be alone in that, and it's just not practical. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I don't know the high school schedule very well. Like, I'll give you an example. The middle school schedule does have uh, the, f the first class every day is 8.30 to 9.30, right off the bat. Right. Um, so, um, PE? Uh, or PE. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I think the PE teacher has period two every day at any uh for his prep. Um, but... Um, uh, so, I don't, but, but yeah, this, this, is a, this is a sketch to uh, some... Possibilities. I'm sorry. I'm hoping we're not doing recess at 8:30. How's that? Mm -hmm. Well, there is. Well, well not in, in that time block. In that time block, actually. Now, now, now this is this is in part because of Annie Yates and the size that we have available, and the master schedule is very tight. Uh, that in that time block, I believe K1 re recess probably is. Again, it's within the at, within that hour. I would suspect it's around nine. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be helpful, and that's my mistake. I'm much better <laughs> criticizing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll bail out at this we point. We appreciate. I appreciate the help. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think I think uh, your point is well taken. Both of your points. W what we task the superintendent with is, you know, the main things are going to be the start of the day, the end of the day, and then during the day, the common spaces for mm -hmm. PE and recess and lunch. 
um, and so we d we do want to see how it plays out for the whole whole time frame. So maybe there's a way to I don't know show that the recess is there's a symbol or something that says not the whole eight thirty nine thirty or yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Any, uh, any other oh, member, Mary? Yes, uh, just a minor thing. Uh, in the uh, area five, is that does that have any softscape material for play area? It does actually. It's not okay. shown here. Okay. Is there at the at the lower end towards the high school? There are two large sort of oval shaped uh, uh, grass turf okay. area, grass natural okay. grass areas. All right that have a seating wall of various width and height around okay. those. Um, and so they fill in those spaces. It's more, it's more of a sort of a seating area mm -hmm. at that site. at that site, And they, they range from about, I think, six inches off the ground to about two feet off the ground. Okay. Right, thank you. <coughs> and, and teachers at Annie Yates have, have uh, very um, um, helpful, um, and a very helpful manner, have rem reminded us at the meeting at Annie Yates recently that hey, we are, we are, one of the teachers I said, said, said it this way, we are a four square school. Mm -hmm. So we've had the architects go by, look at Annie Yates, look at the number of four square uh, areas, so we can consider getting some lines down in this area. The architects, I think, also made note of how many of the, uh, I forget what we call it, with the pole and the ball hanging. Uh, tether ball. Tether ball. Tether, thank you, tether ball, <laughs> tether ball poles we have, so that uh, we can also, because we want to make sure there's some uh, activities like the students have now at Annie Yates. Yeah. Isn't the amphitheater in there as well, though? So at the, w you'll see at the, uh, um, at the very top where it says stage, mm -hmm. there is, uh, that's the, 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 there's a raised platform for a stage there. That, so if you had some kind of performance, the audience would be to the south of the stage. Also, <coughs> there is a seating area uh, in Area 9 towards the high school. There's a, there's a terrace seating area that sort of could be an outdoor classroom. I'm, I'm not sure which amphitheater. Th those are two of those sorts of spaces. Th there was more of an amphitheater-like design at some point, which I, I don't think we is in the current final design. There's not an amphitheater. The, the, the two, again, the two spaces that, that to the, in the corner there, near where the number four is, there is a, a terraced outdoor, like an outdoor classroom yeah. space. I, I think, not I think an amphitheater per se. I think Member Affelt might be thinking of phase, the phase two designs that I recall, and I don't know how far out the design process was, included a theater. Is that member Apple? Yeah, well, yeah, even if you go to the you, you first an, slide you at you the beginning here. There's an informal amphitheater in Area 8 because you have uh, bermed areas, right, don't right. you? Right, correct, correct. There's berms in that area also. Right. I, and I think, but John, I mean, in phase two that we're not working on right now for this project, there, I believe there was some sketch of a theater. Actually, yes, in, in Area 11, the parking lot, that's phase two. There's a building there which has a theater in the mm -hmm. program. Where. Um, is our board meetings take place? Is it the <laughs> community <laughs> commons room? Is it the community room? Is it the gym? Is it the stage? Yeah, we haven't determined that yet. We'll have to have, I think we may have to give you all a tour and have you <laughs> give us some input on that. Okay, there's nothing yeah. in the admin building that's... Not uh, space-wise. It would, it would have to be... There was a theater there the, uh, in the, the old the building. Library. Yeah, the community room has a very large space Pro also. Probably the community room is my guess. The multi -purpose or multi-purpose room. Or multi-purpose room. Good question. So in the library, will there be actual like facilities where students can have like a study room? Is there is there an opportunity for like certain sections to be closed off for quiet areas? Yeah, there are two rooms adjacent to the to this the library. There's a larger room that's really a computer lab sort of classroom that's meant to be used both as a high school classroom or a library facility. It's kind of a flex space. Mm -hmm. And at the very corner of the building, the corner of San Pablo and fifty and, and forty seventh. There's a smaller sort of a conference room size room that's meant to be a quiet study room, also multi-use room, a community group can meet there. Um, it's uh, at probably about a quarter of the size of this room. Any other questions for Mr. Baker or the superintendent? Any public comment? Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Baker, and thank you, Superintendent. Uh -huh. uh, your, your plan on this is to further flush it out and, and fill out the rest of the day? Yes, I, I need to keep developing it more. I, I do need to really consider that, that uh, start time issue because that would also affect, uh, affect how this looks. And so 
I'll, um, I'll have some conversations with uh, ETA and, uh, and, and bring that back to the board as well for consideration as we, as we consider, um, you know, do we have everyone starting at the exact same time or not, or do we, do we stagger that? Okay. Uh, we're on to our last action item, or discussion item, uh, which is 6.2, Superintendent. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is, um, uh, I think, a natural uh, segue uh, from this conversation. Um, the, the meeting that Mr. Baker and I attended at Annie Yates uh, a couple weeks ago with the entire staff was very helpful. Um, Ms. Dunn uh, recorded uh, and uh, other questions. Most of the, the teacher anxiety in the room was based around um, uh, you know, what are the specifics around who's doing the, who's helping us with packing. Um, you know, is there a company that's being hired to help us move? So there, there are some uh, moving type transition questions that the teachers were mostly asking about. Um, but it, it struck me between that meeting and a meeting recently with teachers on, on the site uh, walking through that, uh, that I think, I know we've talked about here at the board having an additional study session, but my thought on this, and I, I wanted to bring this to the board, is that I think it, to do something a little bit more interactive, maybe making it on a Saturday, have a, uh, a special community workshop study session, gives more parents the opportunity to come uh, engage in this, in this conversation as we try to uh, keep this uh, conversation going and make some final determinations in terms of what we're doing in terms of grade levels here. Um, I think it would be helpful to the, the community and to the parents and to uh, for people to also have the opportunity to be on the site I think brings a lot of information and awareness. So my thought is that uh, you know, I know that we said we were going to do another study session. That's part of the reason I'm working on, on these kinds of slides but I'd like to ask the board to consider if we're going to do that I think it should be on a Saturday with a facilitator where we can record notes, we can you know see what people what concerns are still people as they as they get to see the site up front and close, uh, see the things they're concerned about, see the things they like, and to bring that back to the board, or I can bring that back to the board. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Superintendent and I have discussed this, and uh, I, I've been uh, ha meeting with parents at Annie Yates and and. A couple different forums, some smaller, and also the PTO m meeting, as I reported last time, um, two weeks ago, to try to listen and hear what people's um, hopes and concerns are with respect to the new site and um, uh, and continuing, um, you know, options for continuing a configuration of some grades at at any age. So. Um, one takeaway from that was uh, that that people would rather not have a, a, a board-led study session where they have only two minutes to sort of give us feedback and then we move on. Uh, and it seems, you know, when we're having a study <coughs> session on a night where we've got a lot of other uh, agenda items that we need to get through, um, it, it, and it's a school night, and it's, it's not the best uh, forum opportunity so I, I uh, agree with the superintendent that it it makes sense to, to have a different format of a study session that does try to gather um, it's not sort of led by the board but is more led by a, a, a facilitator and um, and and have some breakout sessions where people can uh, enunciate what their what their hopes are, what their concerns are, mm -hmm. and what some p possible solutions for their concerns are. Whether that's um, keep everyone at any eights, whether that's um, um, which I think we should f we should document and and as one possible way. But also, if you know, if we're going to do a, a K three, okay, that's one solution. If we're going to do a K-12, what's your solution for that, um, you know, concern? Uh, um, but that it should be in the context of having some, as the superintendent said, view of the site, explanation of the, the, the architecture and the, the flow plans. Uh, and how and things look, yeah. We, we, we walked through the entire three floors of the K-8 building last week when teachers walked in the classrooms. Yeah. The walls aren't all up, right. but useful 
But I, so I, I think it's a good idea, and I think if we can get um, you know a list of uh, uh, what people are looking forward to and what people are are concerned about, we in making a final decision of what our configurations are going to look like, which we have to do pretty soon, um, we should be able to explain, uh, you know, what our response is to e the major concerns. Right, right. And it's helpful to me as well because, you know, when I presented to all of you in November, I think, I, we presented some, some challenges regarding, you know, the financial aspects of different configurations, but also some revenue opportunities for the property at Annie Eights, whether it's partially open or entirely open and it's hard for, for me to or us to be able to move forward in those conversations until we square down what we're doing here. So I'd, I'd like to recommend if we do this that we do it as soon as, as possible. Maybe, you know, I, I've been eyeing March, uh, well the 5th or the 12th, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards the 12th of March if possible. So thoughts, questions? comments by other board members? Um, I do like the idea of uh, garnering public's input, even though we've gone through the process before, but it's just when you see something in three dimension, it starts to crystallize as far as uh, what's actually happening. Uh, to look at a piece of paper and see lines on it, it's a little difficult uh, at times to understand what really is happening. So I think um, as far as site visit and actual site use, uh, walkthroughs and such will help administer that idea or that foster that idea. And then secondly, uh, to garner information as far as uh, people's concerns for the configuration of both sites, um, that would help uh, go a long way as far as um, you know making a, making a decision. So yeah, I, I would w welcome the, the, the process. I agree as well, um, not to piggyback so much, but when it comes down to getting a feel for an actual vicinity or a place, it's better to you know, be able to see it um, just in plain sight. So getting a, a, not even just a bird's eye view on paper, but an actual feel um, as to what we have in front of us um, in terms of the materials and the different square footage that we can walk through. So. That would definitely be a good idea. Okay. We've been talking about it for a while. I think we need to do it. Okay. Um, it sounds like everyone thinks it's it's a good idea to move forward with that. Um, so you um, will try to narrow down a date, and yes. and you know I think the other key thing is then getting information out probably through the certainly through the email mm -hmm. and robocalls and um, and I don't think we should limit it to the the actual enrolled community but also the the broader okay so the city perhaps can help us um, uh, we have a city schools meeting next week so we can announce it at that time uh, or even prior to that but uh, that's another reminder time uh, yeah and Ms. Um, Collins, I'm sorry, Ms. Collins, I don't have your hyphenated line. Ms. Collins, Collins Rogers. Rogers, I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I'll take a while. Ms. Collins, Rogers, uh, I don't know if we've told you about the joint committee we have with the city schools where we meet, I believe it's about every two months, two and a half months? Three or f I think it's three or four. Uh, six times a year? So we have a, a joint meeting with the city we call city Five schools, times. and so that one's that's coming right, uh, right up around the corner. March. Next week. Next week. Next Thursday, yeah, March third. Ah. Okay. Any any public uh, comment on this item? Here. All right. Um, that concludes our discussion action items, and uh, we're on to board reports and announcements. Are there any board reports or announcements? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, I have a report for the ACSBA general meeting on February 18th. Uh, <laughs> you actually went to one. Yes, I they finally, exist. Yes, they exist. I think um, maybe you tell folks at home what the ACSBA <laughs> is. 
Um, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's Alameda County uh, School Board Association general meeting. Um, the topic at hand was uh, adult ed, and uh, it did bring up some interesting and timely uh, information. But just a brief summary, uh, I took some notes here, and it was a brief summary. There's three consortium that make up the Alameda County's adult ed program. Since being decimated by budget cuts over the past few years, adult ed has been repurposed and re or refocused. Emory Unified resides within the Northern Consortium, but does not have an adult ed program. Uh, representatives of the consortium presented various aspects of the adult ed. Uh, emphasis was given to the following. The, ed, the adult ed program encompasses several goals with the most important one being workforce development per state requirements, which incorporates CTE, career, career technical education, and another worthwhile goal is family literacy, basically assistance for older adults who have children who want to better understand Common Core and have the ability to assist their child. Overall, a positive but guarded optimism for the future of adult ed in Alameda County. That's what I came away from it. But then finally, uh, from this meeting is what is that monies are available from the state and we have several facilities that could work in bringing adult ed program to our district and if it satisfies any specific LCAP requirement. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for that report. Um, other board reports or announcements? Seeing none. Um, calendar review, Superintendent. Yes, thank you. Uh, so we have our city schools meeting, as we were just discussing, coming up uh, next week on March the 3rd, Thursday at 5.30 p.m. And I do believe, just to say this out loud to all of you, that the plan for quite a while from the city side and, and, and my meetings with them is that this meeting will be actually at ECCL. The gym. So yeah, at the gym. I think the meeting will actually start with a, a tour or an, uh, an on the agenda, I believe. That's what we discussed. And yeah. Maybe starting at 5? Uh, yeah, I need to go back and check if we're starting at 5 or 5.30. I need to so find out if they're changing. The plan was start a little earlier, mm -hmm. get more light. Yeah, yeah, because we have another week before I think daylight savings time uh, goes back for or pushes forward for us. Uh, so that is our next meeting right now. I'll, I'll have to I'll determine if it's five or five thirty. Um, we have a citizens oversight committee meeting coming up on March eighth at five p.m. Um, they actually are very interested actually uh, uh, in holding their meeting as well at ECCL. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but that may be the case. Um, and then we have our next school board meeting on Wednesday, March 9th. Okay. All right. Uh, we will now adjourn to closed session to consider one item.